Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about losing weight and what's the best way to do it. Now in the past I've been on loads and loads of different diets and tried to lose weight in different ways. Before I got educated I thought low fat was the way to go and it obviously isn't. There's other methods that people use to lose weight, things like Weight Watchers and Slimming World and things like that. But I'm going to tell you what I have found to be the best way to lose weight. So let's crack on with it. Okay, so let's start off with the things that we should and shouldn't be eating. And I'm not going to give you an exhaustive list. I'm just going to give you the basic idea. So the first thing we want to do is talk about things not to eat. And we don't want to be eating things like corn, any kind of beets, tomatoes, peas, squash, milk, protein powders, anything at all like that. We don't want to be eating potatoes and root vegetables, carrots, etc, etc. Things we do want to be eating. Let's start at the beginning. The first things we want to be eating is meat. Not lean meat like chicken, but we want to be eating meats that's high in fat, like beef and pork and oily fish. We want to be eating eggs. And for the vitamins, if you're not on a carnivore diet like myself, loads and loads of leafy green vegetables. This will give us all the minerals that we need to survive. One of the other things we want to be eating is liver. We want to be eating liver for the vitamins and the minerals that it can give us while we're on our diet. I'm intermittent fasting. This means that generally I only eat one meal a day. Sometimes if I get a little bit peckish, I'll expand that window and I will have an eating window from say four o'clock until eight o'clock on an evening where I'll have a big meal when I first start my uh, eating window. And then I will move on and just have perhaps a little bit of a snack later on about seven or eight o'clock. And then that's it. I don't eat up to four hours before I'm going to bed. I find if I do, if I eat something in the last hour before I go to bed, I can get a little bit of indigestion and heartburn because I'm laying down with a stomach full of food. So I try not to do that at all. Now I know intermittent fasting isn't easy to do and it's something that you've got to build yourself into gradually. Now I generally, uh, when I started intermittent fasting, I cut breakfast out. I'm not a big breakfast fan anyway. So I would not have breakfast. What you want to do is say if you get out of bed at 8am, try and go as long as you can without eating, say 11 or 12 o'clock, and then have a meal. And then probably about 5 or 6 o'clock on an evening, have another meal. And then don't eat again until the next day when you've got out of bed, perhaps 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock again, and start increasing it like that. So as you're intermittent fasting, you're fasting for longer and longer. Now the easy way to do this is eat food that's high in good fats. This will keep you satiated, you'll not be hungry and once your body gets used to it and you're fat adapted, you'll be able to do it quite easily. I don't find a problem with it at all. During this fasting period, what's actually happening is your body is using your own fat for fuel. So rather than what you've eaten being the fuel that you're living on, your body is devouring all the fat that you've stored in the past. Now it's not going to eat lean muscle or anything like that. It's going to eat your body fat and it will produce ketones. And it's easy to tell if your body's living on fat, you get some keto sticks, you pee on them and they change color. So you know you're in what we call ketosis and you know that you're doing your fasting correctly. So try and build this fasting period up to one meal a day if you can. If you can't, have a small eating window and you will still lose weight. What the idea is, is you want to try and fast for 18 hours a day if you can. That will still give you a six hour eating window. 20 hours is even better. What I'm starting to do now is I'm going to do a weekend fast of 48 hours. So I'll have my last meal 
on a Friday evening, probably about five o'clock, and then I won't eat again until about five o'clock on a Sunday evening. So I'm doing a 48 hour fast. And all that time I'm fasting, I'm living off the fat that I've stored in my body to run my body and to live on and to power my muscles and my brain and my organs and everything else. So as you can tell, or as you can imagine, I'm gonna be losing weight like mad during that 48 hour period. And if I, can manage, if I can manage to do this every weekend, I'll be cooking on gas. Well, I won't, I'll be cooking on fat, but you know what I mean. So that's what I want to do. Once a month, if it's possible, I might extend that 48 hour fast into a 72 hour fast, but I'm not planning on going any longer than 72 hours. That is plenty, especially if you're doing it once a month. The benefits that you'll find through doing this is you'll have loads of energy, you'll feel fantastic, and the weight will absolutely drop off. So the next thing I want to talk about is exercise. Now is exercise essential to lose weight? No, it's not, not really. Uh, the correct diet and you'll lose weight, it's not a problem. But exercising will definitely help. And they help in several ways. First of all, it'll make you feel better. When your body releases those endorphins, when you've done some exercise, it makes you feel a lot better in yourself. You feel you're achieving something by exercising. And you get so that you want to go out and exercise again once your body gets used to it. So any exercise is good. Start off just doing something very basic like walking. Go out and walk for half an hour to start with and then build that up to an hour. What I do when I go for a walk is I've got a rucksack I had from the army. I stick about 15 kilos in there and I will go out and I'll walk for an hour, an hour and a half, carrying a 15 kilo rucksack. When you start your walking, initially, just walk at a normal pace. And as you get more used to it, pick that pace up and walk briskly. Get your heart rate up. Get yourself one of these watches or a pedometer or whatever, and it tells you how fast you've walked and how far you've walked. I find it invaluable to try and keep a record of how far I walk and how fast I'm doing it so I can see if I'm improving or not and I'll make little notes like whether I've worn a rucksack or not or whether I've done it without my rucksack. Now if you can't get to a gym or you don't want to go to a gym there's things that you can do to exercise away from the gym other than walking. One of the things that's good for you is high intensity interval training and what I would suggest is you build up to this quite steady because it can be it can be very exhausting and, and it's not as easy as you think start off with sprinting sprinting is always always good what you want to do is sprint for 30 seconds as fast as you can stop have a 20 second rest and then sprint again for 30 seconds as fast as you can and do as many sets as you can now, if you can get up to seven or eight sets, that's absolutely fantastic. If you can only do two or three, then that's fine. But just start building up from there and your stamina and your strength will pick up. But sprinting is very, very tiring, especially when you're carrying a lot of weight or you're getting on a little bit like me. You find that sprinting is not so easy. But anyway. If you're exercising at home, just try things like burpees and planks. Skipping, get a skipping rope and do some jumping over that skipping rope. If you've got a push bike, get the push bike out the garage or out the shed and go for a ride on your push bike. Any kind of exercise is going to be good for you. If you're going to the gym, I go to the gym once, sometimes twice a week, and I do my resistance training there. Now, when I go, I'm not doing things like a bodybuilder trains, I do more like a power lifter would train. So I'm doing things like squats, deadlifts, um, clean and jerk, that kind of stuff. Stuff that uses my whole body in one exercise. And I will do rapid sets. So I'm kind of doing interval training with weights. So I'll do 10 deadlifts and I'll have a 30 second weight 
and then I'll do another 10 deadlifts and then a 30 second weight and then another 10 deadlifts. So it's interval training with weights and resistance training. I tend not to use barbells, I tend to use dumbbells. I find I can stretch a little bit better on them. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I broke my arm last year and I suffer with a, a frozen shoulder that is getting better. And I just find dumbbells are that little bit easier when I'm doing any kind of weightlifting. So I will do rapid sets of overhead press, uh, dumbbell squats, so I'll have my dumbbells and I'll squat and then I'll lift them up. Anything like that where I'm using my whole body. I don't have to be doing it with an Olympic bar and big plates on doing my deadlifts and my squats. I can do it using dumbbells. And once again, I do it as a high interval training type exercise, which really pumps your muscles, pumps your body and burns those calories. So anyway, that's what I'm doing to lose weight and try and lose weight quite rapidly. And that's why I'm having as much success as I am on the carnivore diet. I'm not saying it's easy. You have to be disciplined. You have to make your mind up that this is what you're going to do. But if you do it, I can guarantee you will have success. Anyway, that's about it for now. So if you've enjoyed this video, found it interesting, please give it a thumbs up. Please share any comments down below and I will try and answer them as fast as I can. And like I say, all subscribers are welcome. I smile every time I get a new one. So hopefully I will see you in the next video. And hopefully there's going to be less of me then. So bye everybody. See you soon.